Good morning, everyone. My name is Priya Saman, and I'm very honored to be uh, part of the Horasis India first virtual conference. Indeed, a historic moment for all of us to be a part of. Art imitates life, and life imitates art. This is neither prophetic, it's not its reflective. On the surface, Bollywood is the land of opportunities and dreams. But there has been an undercurrent of some negative headlines surrounding this industry in recent weeks. However, this industry is also known for its generosity to come together in their time of crisis. Amid this pandemic and some of the tragic developments of last few weeks, there is no better time nor a better stage to come together and discuss how Bollywood will emerge through this crisis from a human perspective and from a trade perspective. With all this glaring, I would now like to open this conversation with the very talented actor and activist Rajeshri Deshpande. Rajeshri, good morning and welcome. Uh, this COVID-19 uh, pandemic has brought the world to a grinding halt. And the mental health crisis is also on rise and it's rampant in the entertainment industry. The road ahead of us is very murky. Can you please provide some insights into this issue and any word of advice that you can give to the struggling actors, especially the ones who come from a very small town and face a do or die situation? Thank you so much, Priya. Thank you so much, Hirasis. And uh, good morning, good evening to everyone. Uh, see, we, we can all fall victim to this psychological pressure, into this ravenous of mental health illness. And I guess it will take us years to even realize and reach for help. I have come from a small town, and I know how difficult it is to always have that feeling of fitting to this mold. And uh, it was very difficult for me, or even others also, to understand the pressure over here. So I feel what needs to be addressed is that, you know, the first and the foremost important thing is awareness. What is all lacking is awareness. And uh, my, my feeling is that we all need to understand that the world which we are living in, especially the entertainment industry, that that demands us to be somewhere, that demands us to follow certain things, that demands us to, uh, you know, uh, be like someone else. But what we have to do is we have to keep to our craft, uh, keep working hard with whatever uh, challenges we are facing, uh, and understand that, you know, uh, it's not it's it's okay to not fit into this it's okay to have your root it's okay to follow your path because the pressures will be there the comparison will be there people will ask people will demand from us but for me and for others i feel that because we all are from the same fraternity we all are and it's not only in the industry but other industry as well i feel that you know we all have to keep marching we all have to keep talking and we all have to keep listening as well. Because till the time we don't share what is happening with us, till the time the awareness doesn't seep into us, then it will be very difficult for us to survive in any industry, not only in this. And pandemic has definitely made it a little difficult uh, because uh, suddenly we've got uh, a more time in hand. But, uh, that's the reason, you know, that's the reason we need to follow a healthier habits where uh, we are talking. And let's discuss about our issues. Why not? Let's share our issues, which is very, very important. So that's what I feel the all struggling actors, yeah, whatever, you know, forget about the struggling people. We all are struggling everywhere. So let's just talk. I think that's what I always feel and I, that's what I keep doing. So you talked about awareness, you talked about pressure, and you talked about sharing. So when it 
comes to pressure, you know, uh, they say music is very helpful. Music gives relief in the time of stress and the fears that we all are going through. But the notes are not high, even for the music industry right now. As an artist, live performer, and a recording producer, my next question is to Karan. Karan, tell me that uh, what ways have you found to persevere during this uh, lockdown phase? And how do you think the future looks for your industry? Because there's a lot of disruption right now. Karan, you're muted. Hey guys, thanks a lot for having me. Um, the music industry, I think, is going through a bit of a tumultuous time. Um, you know, OTT platforms like uh, Netflix, Amazon, they've seen a they've seen a pretty you know large rise in their overall revenue during this COVID time, and I think it comes down to basic consumer behavior. Um, people have a lot more time to sort of sit at home and consume content, whereas the typical, I guess, the typical times people would consume music like basically like their commute to work, for example, you know, that's something that hasn't really been there over the last, I'd say two to three months. So it's taken a hit. I believe there's a 20%, um, there's a 20% dip in music industry sales across the world. So I'd say a good way of looking at it is basically by um, analyzing the different revenue streams and, you know, seeing how I think there's a lot of, while there's, there's a negative aspect to this, um, to this pandemic vis-a-vis -vis the music industry, I think there's a there's a real positive side to it that can sort of take place as well if you know things are sort of um, heading in that direction. So the music industry has always changed. It's it's gone from you know we start from vinyl to cassettes to CD to then with Napster. You know the music industry has constantly had to adapt, and I think this is just a situation like that where I think we all you know we all need to adapt. So the first industry within the music industry that's really been hit the most is the live industry because you know you have you have venues you have promoters and mo more than that you have a lot of people in a confined space and i think that's something that's going to have the longest hit in the music industry so a way i think people have tried to circumvent that issue is by live streaming concerts and i think that's a really positive change because with or without the pandemic i think that's definitely with a more you know internet driven world i think that's definitely that's definitely an angle that needs to be exploited and i think over time it's something that's going to be monetized extremely effectively so i think that's a, i think that's a great development um even vis-a-vis -vis promoting um promoting people's music there's an artist called travis scott that um i i think used a very innovative way of marketing his music by um essentially superimposing himself in the game Fortnite. And it was one of the most highest viewed performances, like virtual performances, which was great. Um, I think a lot of, I think there's different tiers of artists. More established artists are facing different different concerns and um, new artists, like, you know, um, a lot of people make their money from teaching. And I think, again, just given the virtual environment, the same way that we're doing this conversation virtually when traditionally it's been, you know, an in-person thing. I think there's a lot of opportunity in in teaching music virtually. You know, there's a lot of softwares that can be in, implemented. So I think that's something that's going to really, really take off soon. Um, and there's obviously session musicians. So a lot of session musicians, they go into the studio and they make their living off playing on recordings. I think there's a lot of opportunity there vis-a-vis, um, -vis, you know, like virtual jam rooms, which is, I think, softwares that can be developed right now because... If essentially right now, you know, I might I might make a record and I collaborate with an engineer in Paris, a mastering engineer in Los Angeles, and you know, people all over the world. So I think a lot of these situations and needs that we're facing during the pandemic can be applied even post pandemic. And I think that's the right attitude to sort of look at it with. So um, also, I think in terms of financial sustenance during this time, you know, I think the Indian market, the Indian music industry operates drastically differently than you know overseas so for example a lot of a lot of musicians overseas survive off royalties whereas i think in india that's not necessarily a concept that's fully fleshed out you know you've got you've got master royalties you've got publishing royalties um in india mostly musicians don't really get master royalties that's maintained with the label um so that's something i think over time with the formation of iprs if those things are if those institutions are developed 
I think that would make um, that would make a country like India and its artists a lot more prepared, you know, in times of crisis because you know they'll be able to sustain off these back end revenues, which is great. Um, I think another 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 great revenue stream which could be built here is uh, merchandise, but unfortunately, I think in India, music is so Bollywood centric that the formation of independent artists, the independent scene is just growing right now. Um, but I think that's a, that's a great vertical, which, you know, there's a lot of opportunity, opportunity to be had there. So I think um, merchandise is another way that I think musicians would have been able to probably um, come through this time a lot better, but I don't think they necessarily have, based on the volumeness <laughs> of the industry. Um, I think one great aspect of, of musicians right now in India is the fact that there's a lot of collaboration with brands. Now, I think that's something that's got a lot of musicians through this time, you know, being able to maintain financial solvency because um, with with artists being developed as artists in their own right, um, a lot of brands are reaching out to them right now because they're able to make content at home. So there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunities there as well. Um, I think the the other thing right now, which India is sort of struggling with as well is the streaming numbers because um, DSP such as like Spotify distributors, a lot of these people like us, you know, they haven't really been able to go to work. So there's been, there's been issues I think people are facing there. So I think over time, now that the lockdown is probably going to open up a little bit soon, you'll find that, you know, these things are coming back in, but definitely over the last few months, it's something that's taken a hit. So um, also another, another thing is that there's, I think in, in other countries, there have been artist relief packages that have been, you know, distributed to artists, which is something that hasn't really happened in India. So it'd be great if you know that's something that could be incorporated in the future to see. Obviously, during a pandemic, artists aren't necessarily essential in terms of, you know, food delivery, um, supply chains. But I think overall, you know, in terms of media consumption, it plays a pivotal role. And I think yeah, if these sort of things were introduced more effectively into the just into the way India perceives its artists, I think, you know, people will be a lot more prepared in a time like this. Um, yeah, I think, I think going forward, one of the biggest struggles artists have faced right now, myself included, is, um, you know, despite having like a, a multi-track recording contract, you know, we're not able to shoot videos, at least not to the scale that we're primarily accustomed to shooting them with. So I think, I think all these things are going to lead to very innovative solutions. I think, Personally, I believe this is an excellent time for the Indian music industry to be able to start a healthy disconnect from Bollywood. And I'm somebody who's worked in Bollywood for a lot of years, but I think there's a lot of value to be had in the independent circuit. And I think this is a terrific time for that, um, for that, you know, that detachment and that, that self, that reliance on the Bollywood industry to promote music. And I think, you know, it's, if, if used correctly, that can be it can be a really really positive outcome. And from a business perspective, from a creative perspective, I think you know that's the way forward. And I really really hope that it's something that we take advantage of over the next coming months and you know um, really get the best results out of it. Yep. So this is great. I mean, you shared a lot of uh, you know different but key uh, aspects and some models that can come out of it. So I'm pretty sure um, you know the peers in your music industry will take a look at it and maybe think about it and uh, moving forward. So this lockdown has also given a lot of time to creative minds to unleash their imagination. So I would now like to ask one of the most talented filmmakers the industry has, uh, Nitish Tiwari. Has this lockdown sparked uh, more creativity in the writing process? And what do you expect the new norms of filmmaking to be post lockdown? Hi, Pia. Thank you so much for having me here. Hi, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> see, uh, you know, uh, it took us quite some time. Uh, to come to terms with what was happening. Uh, initial days were spent in trying to worry about something which was more critical, which was about life, you know, and about managing life uh, in this situation. So first few weeks went into worrying about, uh, you know, it was, it was nothing about work. It was all about who does what, you know, who does the cooking, who does the washing, who does the cleaning. And uh, most importantly, how do our kids remain unaffected by all this? So a lot of planning went into this. Once that came on auto mode, 
then we started then only we started thinking about work which was around 2 to 3 weeks into this uh, situation and uh, then we realized that you know we can actually start writing over phone calls over video calls and at least uh, we were not sure but uh, we said let's give it a shot whether it works out or not rather than just sitting and uh, doing uh, nothing and uh, we discovered that yes a lot of writing a lot of good writing also can happen over video calls so since then we've been writing very uh, religiously very diligently and uh, it has turned out to be pretty good it has turned out to be pretty good it doesn't really compensate for personally meeting and uh, writing but uh, i do believe that uh, you know you can actually work without traveling much and in only important cases you can travel and then get to meet people otherwise there is not so we waste so much of time in traveling or especially in mumbai you know travel time is a lot so i personally believe going forward that yeah mm-hmm. me and my writers have decided that we don't really need to meet so often we can do a lot of writing <coughs> on video calls because it turns out to be very good and uh, only when required we will uh, meet and discuss for the final tuning uh, coming to the direction bit of it uh, you know, i consider myself lucky uh, that uh, none of my projects were affected midway you know that's the reason why i am calling myself lucky because i would have been very anxious i would have wanted to finish those projects you know how what it means for a director to have something which is halfway stuck there so i would divide post covid situation into two parts which is about people who if i was in a situation where i had a project which was stuck i would want to go back and follow all the guidelines no matter how stringent they are no matter but they are important and i would want to finish the project because i have a responsibility my current situation is i do not have any immediate need to go on floor so i have all the right to ask myself question that do i want to work that way because the restrictions are going to be little stringent and it is always going to play on your mind because there are a lot of people who you are responsible for god forbid if something happens do you really want to work under so much of pressure you know that you have to do so many things is it really worth it my personal opinion is creativity film making anything has to do with creation should be fearless so if given a choice if i can hold on i would not want to go and shoot with so much of apprehensions around and i would rather wait out for a few more days but if it is really urgent if it is really important then i would go out and uh, uh, do the direction bit yeah. so that's the uh, thing from my end so uh, you brought a very good point that you know if something is midway then you know it makes you very anxious so my next question is to siddharth uh so see it's going to take time for the theater going experience to come back to normal can you please share your insights on the challenges the production houses are currently facing with the slated releases that, that are you know being postponed and also for the new projects what are your thoughts in the terms of funding that will happen between the commercial cinema and the independent cinema because i'm pretty sure post covid there will be so much impact based stuff that will be coming out so there will be so much that will you know be offered to uh, all the production houses uh thanks for having me priya i think you raised some very pertinent questions which frankly i i, I just want to preface my answer by saying that we don't have all the answers right now so what i'm going to be talking about is really going to be crystal ball gazing with some idea of what everyone might be going through at this point of time i think when it comes to theatrical releases it's a really tricky situation at at this point because i think most people are of the consensus that cinemas will be the last uh, thing to reopen really uh because of the fact that it's considered a non essential service it is uh it is about people in an enclosed air conditioned environment for a long period of time and therefore the risk uh as would be perceived by the government and by the authorities and rightly so would be quite high uh the second problem that producers face is that every state is going through its own cycle in the crisis right now and because of that for a hindi movie and spears i mean speaking specifically about hindi movies to be able to release uh, to to be able to release you need at least the key states across the country to have their cinema halls completely open at the same time now that unfortunately might not happen for a long time you might have delhi open and bombay not open you might have bangalore open 
and you know like Delhi not open and that is going to take a fair amount of time. The, the other problem is that the overseas markets as well which form a crucial part of the revenue are also not really uh, going to all open simultaneously. And I think that is the problem for any film producer who's made a medium or a large scale film. Um, the, the other problem is that if it's only the smaller films that are releasing, then theaters will not be able to you know, open and sustain their costs. So there are no easy answers right now. I think it's going to take some time before this sorts itself out, uh, which is why you're seeing producers taking whatever calls that they have to take right now and maybe going straight to an OTT platform with their films. Uh, when it comes to production, I think like uh, we were just discussing and like Nitesh said, uh, you know, those who are going to be the most keen to get back on the floors are going to be those people who've got something stuck in between. Either they've got patchwork or they've got a film to complete because that is an anxious situation creatively as well as economically. Um, and I dare say they are going to find it quite difficult to follow all the guidelines in place. It's not impossible. We've seen uh, various units around the world doing it, but it is going to be a new normal that we all have to discover together. I think there's a lot of learning that we get from the way it goes in the TV industry because that probably will be the first one to start, uh, especially the soap operas that might be more contained on one set, one unit, um, you know, not really requiring multiple setups, not really requiring to go outdoor and shoot. Uh, and there'll be lots of learnings that come up there. But I think what it, it's beholden upon us to take the responsibility of saying that if we are going to be assembling so many people at times, like really hundreds of people in uh, in an environment, we need to really take baby steps and take it a step at a time and really learn as we go and keep implementing new guidelines as we keep going. We've, right now, the guidelines we've put together are really theoretical. Uh, it's really once it comes into practice that so many smaller things will come up and we'll have to just keep troubleshooting and firefighting as, as we keep going. So, uh, because of COVID, many films are now released online. Uh, so, my next question is to uh, Prasunji. Uh, has this changed the role of censorship? And I'm also going to um, ask a follow-up question on that. Is that over the last couple of years, the viewer's um, perception as well as the filmmaker's perspective towards the censor board has become very positive? What has been your approach to bring about this positive change? Okay, uh, there are two questions there. First of all, uh, thank you for inviting me here, Priya. Uh, you've been very nice. We've been talking about uh, various things and I would try to uh, cover your long question. It's, it's a long question. Uh, and thank you for acknowledging the efforts uh, we made at, uh, at the CBFC. Uh, we we try to uh, solve things through dialogues. I always believe that uh, mm, uh, I always respect the intent of the filmmaker. Uh, being a creative person myself, I know how one creates. Um, and uh, so I always encouraged dialogues between uh, various stakeholders because they are all working towards one goal. And um, only uh, thing which w w has been in my head is that, they, see, uh, creativity is a vantage point. Uh, when you look at a river uh, from the river bank, you find it very calm and quiet and beautiful. Someone who is out there fighting the waves in the river doesn't call the river calm. For him or her, the river is aggressive. Now, the same river is aggressive and calm, but it depends on the vantage point. So what happens is creativity is a vantage point. And when, once you come with your vantage point, then especially in the commercial world, sometimes probably as a creator, you have not looked at any other person's point of view. So if you saw the river as a calm, quiet river, you do not know the point of view of the someone who is out there fighting the waves and calling the river aggressive. Now, how do you bridge that? How do you bring people? The best thing is to bring them together, have a dialogue and make them see each other's point of view. Another thing is that we need to understand, uh, see, there is something called freedom and freedom of expression we call up a lot. Now, there is something called freedom and there is something called expression. Now, if someone who is not brought up with the lexicon of debate, okay, you put that person and say, I'm giving you 15 minutes and another person of 15 minutes uh, to the person who is probably 
you know, very well versed in the debating culture, giving them 15 minutes both does not mean they got equal chance. Because one guy is has mastered debate, other person barely can speak. So you cannot say that freedom of expression is benefiting in current setup. Everyone is benefiting the ones which have mastered expression, but it's not still benefiting a section of a society which does not have facility with expression. So I think it's important to listen to all the voices when it comes to creative world, especially when it's not art for art's sake, especially when we want to call our industry uh, industry. Any industry in any sector would be would, would have a code of conduct, would ha have a certain rules under which the, the industry will work. So these are the kind of things I have been able to and and see being from the fraternity, I have had people like, you know, Siddharth sitting out there where we can we can have these dialogues. We can understand each other's points of views. So this, this is this is the reason probably the compliment you gave that we've been able to run uh, uh, CBFC smoothly is that also we've removed a lot of riffraff. We made it more digital, uh, more transparent in terms of the way it functions. It's work in progress and one tries one's best. Now coming to uh, the point of view of, um, on, on OTT. Now you're talking about OTT, uh, the, the platform. I think uh, people like Nitish and, um, and even Sid has talk, talked about it. See, we are going through changing times. And a lot has been talked about essential and non-essential today. The question I am asking us, is entertainment essential or non-essential? You call human beings a social. You say human is a social animal. Where does social come from? We were not born social animal. We became social animal. Our social need became higher. We started wanting. This became almost hardwired in us that social needs can make you sick if you not, not uh, met with. So has entertainment become a more essential need than non-essential? That needs to be understood. Can you imagine an envisage a world today where there is zero entertainment? Uh, I would find it difficult. So seems, well, the psychoanalysts and the, and, and the theorists there would tell you better, but it seems that entertainment is gradually getting hardwired into us. Now, the question is, then there are practical problems like other speakers talked about that uh, today going out of the theaters, events, all those are impacted. But still, the need is very much there. The need is going to be met in a different way. So what I have seen, you know, and I don't call, call it post-COVID, I call it with COVID era. We are not going to be in a post-COVID era. We are going to be into a with COVID era. Now, this with COVID era, I feel that people have actually looked at their priorities very closely. Now they know what is important, whether it's relationship, whether the, their job, uh, whether their everyday uh, you know, uh, interactions, they have been able to prioritize that what is more important to me. And in this, in this prioritization, the subjects of the films will change. When you talk about entertainment at home, you'll see very different expectations from entertainment. A lot of filmmakers, I'm sorry to tell them that a lot of things which they made uh, pre this era with the mindset of a consumer in their head might not work that well because we living in a very different mindset of people where their priorities have changed, their, their expectations from a relationship have changed, man and woman living together, you know, peeling off each other's onions and discovering different sides of each other, some likable, some not. A lot of issues have emerged there. Those are the films. Those are the issues which have which will have to be taken up, taken cognizance of this change. So I think consumption will happen, but this will be not unmindful consumption. I think we were consuming food, but be it food, be it entertainment. There was a huge amount of unmindful consumption. Jise kehte hain ki ek wolfing down consumption. That wolfing down is going to come down. There is more conscious choice one is going to make on what one is going to watch. 
and more informed choice will also come into play. The hit and trials will go down. The size of the screen has become smaller. Hence, the teams have to adhere to that. The spectacle will take a beating. The spectacle, which used to be a, a calling card of a theater film, huge film coming with a spectacle because it's to mesmerize you. That will change. Another point, which used to be that we considered online consumption as individualistic consumption, individual one-on-one -on -one consumption. Now, and we call theater as collective consumption. Collective psyche used to be different. Individual psyche used to be different. Now, collective consumption is going to happen at home. The families are going to sit and watch the TV together. The, so the, the whole way a OTT will approach their content will also have to take cognizance of the fact that it has become more collective than individual. So these are the, uh, these are the many other things and we can uh, sort of talk a lot about it. There are many eminent people here who, who, who would probably throw more light on this. But yes, that's where willy nilly I, I am. And um, there are many more things one can talk as we go. I, I I really agree with you and you know everyone else who will agree as well that you sp said about the mindfulness and the impact because the audience is becoming really intelligent and you know very informed of what's happening so that that's very key but you also mentioned about you know um, at the sensor board you know you the usage of technology was one of the key things that you know about the brought the positive change so last but not the least, you know, innovation and technology is key to succeed in any industry vertical. Tech has disrupted all the industry sectors and entertainment uh, is uh, no different. Streaming platforms or the OTT, as we call in India, are, are bursting in ubiquity. And because the data is becoming so uh, much cheaper and, you know, good content is available, it's, it's you know, used by everyone. So, Swanit, as a media and a tech entrepreneur, can you tell me what trends have you seen in the entertainment consumption of the Indian audience? And more importantly, how do you anticipate that trends to be after the crisis is over? Sure. So, Percy, thank you for having us. Um, so, look, I think the most obvious uh, trends are obviously that uh, consumption and engagement across platforms has grown. Um, you know, you, you've seen uh, not only within the OTT industry, but you've seen, you know, across the digital sector, whether it's e-commerce, whether it's digital payments, it's all grown. Secondly, I think you'll see that there's a new user pie that has grown. So the pie has actually grown bigger. So people who haven't used, you know, platforms before have actually started using platforms. Then you know, you're seeing different trends uh, in terms of, you know, audience. So um, you're seeing, you know, people who, who haven't, you know, traditionally watched um, content before they started to actually start watching content. And then, you know, you see like, uh, um, you know, user preferences. So genres such as, you know, people watching more and more, um, you know, different genres and different types of content across platforms growing. Um, you've seen, you know, premium quality, short form content come abroad, you know, uh, different sort of, um, different sort of lengths, different sort of, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, professionally generated, cur curated content. And, you know, like uh, Prasunji uh, said, you know, Karan also made some astute uh, observations that, you know, you're actually seeing, um, you know, the size of the screen has become smaller. So how do people curate that type of content to that type of size of screen? Um, the rate of acceleration and the rate of acceptance of new technologies, right? So how do, you know, users going forward, how do they actually... Um, get onto these platforms more easier? How do they accept it? People who haven't used platforms before, they're ready and accepting to use new new forms of uh, media. You know, um, we don't know what a post-COVID or, you know, a with-COVID world will look like. So it's not for us to actually judge 
um, at the moment because it'll all depend on, you know, the way the world looks. So you are seeing, you know, new platforms actually, um, you know, bringing on, you know, first day, first show, uh, different forms of, um, you know, content that'll come, uh, you know, without maybe going to the cinema first. Uh, so, you know, that's a strong possibility that will happen. Uh, secondly, I think, or, you know, you know, moreover, you know, after post COVID, I think, you know, OTT platforms that are uh, subscription based, I, I think that there will be definitely some form of creativeness in terms of approach, uh, where, you know, how they structure um, some of their deals, you know, do they bundle with other platforms to make it more easily accessible for new users? Um, you know, to come, you know, let's say three platforms together um, offering a single pricing. Uh, I think that's definitely going to be one. And I think the other thing is, you know, with so many people at home, you know, are people going to be more and more conscious, um, you know, when they actually go to a cinema? Um, so I think that OTT platforms will continue to grow, but I think, uh, it's up to the OTT platforms how they're able to make a more immersive experience for the user. Um, you know, technologies like AR, VR will actually become an extended reality for the consumer. Um, and 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 you know, this rate of acceleration is very important. Uh, rate of acceleration of technology is very important because. Um, that's what enables and drives the technology industry to move forward. I think that um, trends like digital assets, uh, trends like gamification of platforms, I think that trends like, um, you know, different, you have now different moments in a day. How do you curate your content to those moments? Let's say you wake up in the morning, you've got 15 minutes. How do you curate 15 minutes of content versus, you know, when people come home at the end of the day, they have much longer. So they might want to watch a movie or, or, or a long um, uh, web series, etc. So I think uh, these are some of the trends that um, I would highlight. Uh, these are not the only trends, but definitely ones that uh, are worth noting. Yeah, uh, the, the, Priya, just see on the on the technology front, see, we have to understand, we, I think you will come to it and people ask about OTT content and rollers. See, today you should know that there is no role of CBFC there. We do not, uh, that doesn't fall under the CBFC's purview today. And yeah. people, a lot of people have asked this question. So since we are talking, so first of all, CBFC doesn't look after OTT content today. We don't have any sort of uh, directive in that. Uh, then people ask me, what would be the future? I'm saying that, see, you have to understand we have entered absolutely a new era when we talk about technology and convergence of many technologies. Mm -hmm. Cinema era has been used to an active performer and a passive audience. You have no way of knowing your active reaction of the audience. Today, with the convergence of the platforms, you have an active performer performance, an active performer, and an active audience immediately react, reacting to it. A theater artist knows the meaning of it, that what does it mean by having an active audience? You constantly getting a feedback. Now, this new feedback mechanism, which is today because of the technology is not going to go away. We need to learn from it. I think OTT platform is still in at its infancy in terms of maturity of becoming an industry and knowing exactly how to go hand in hand with the society. Because, see, you cannot ever say that I want my consumer's share of wallet, but I do not respect his share of voice. Share of wallet will come with share of voice. Now, how do we deal with it? What is the code of conduct? How I, I think that is work in progress. I think that will emerge. Any industry that emerges, any new reality brings it new challenges. And only way you can deal with it is when you are fair, transparent, and cognizant of the points of views of various stakeholders. So um, I also wanted to add, Karan, you had mentioned that, you know, uh, Travis Scott had done like, um, uh, you know, 
well, in one of his videos, use of uh, technology. So I see, uh, you know, offline there is a collaboration or at least points to discuss between uh, you and Swanit because he mentioned about AR, VR, blockchain, AI. So these are all the frontier technologies that are already there, out there, that various industry verticals are using. And definitely sooner or later it will be, um, uh, you know, um, implemented in Bollywood as well. So we discussed, um, you know, I want to be uh, sensitive to the time that we have about, um, you know, Bollywood from a trade perspective. But I also want to get a humane angle to it because, you know, at the end of the day, no matter which industry we represent, we are all human beings, right? So uh, due to COVID-19, we are all forced uh, to assess our role as human beings and the effects on the planet that we are blessed to live on. We all had time for some personal reflections and, you know, we got more time than we bargained for. So during this lockdown phase, what was the most impactful personal learning that each one of you had and how are you going to implement that learning in your work? So it's a common question to all of you, and I will go in the order that I started. So Rajeshri, uh, please take the floor. Uh, see, when I uh, uh, when I from advertising, I turned to turn into acting. That time only I had decided that uh, you know this is the passion which I'm following and which is passion since my childhood. So I decided to be happy, to have the joy of whatever I'm doing, whether I'm performing in a theater or in you know, a film or a street play or whatever it is. I decided to uh, find or indulge myself in the best possible way. I was part of doing something which I have never liked it uh, in advertising. I was selling anything and everything at that time. So I decided to be true to you know, my work what I'm talking, what I'm portraying. And the same thing I've continued till now. So my uh, acting, uh, my um, uh, literature, reading and everything impacted so much in my real life that I started getting involved in people and their journey and their uh, the, the, the issues which we all are facing. So, uh, uh, as you must be knowing it, that I've been working in for villages from past five, six years. And uh, in, in this pandemic, uh, you know, I have worked on more villages. Like I was working on two villages, but in this pandemic, I worked on 30 villages to distribute ration and essential services. So uh, that's what I feel that, you know, you have to find what gives you happiness. You have, you cannot just say that, you know, okay, this is what exactly uh, you know, the fame or money, how much money you need, how much fame you want, what exactly you want to do with your life. Are you are you true to your craft? What you're reading, what you're saying, are you preaching the same thing? I feel that was more important for me. Or playing Ismat or playing Durga or playing uh, Lakshmi from Goddesses. Am I telling the real story or am I believing what I'm saying? Am I following what I'm saying? I may, I may stand in a can of uh, red carpet and talk about Ismith over there. But am I doing, you know, something, anything for the Ismith, which is on the road now? Uh, the Durgas who's actually claustrophobic and following uh, uh, on the path. So that's what I decided that, you know, I will do and I'll believe, uh, which I believe. I will follow the path where, you know, that that little happiness is with me and which I'm passing on to people also. And I'm working on solutions. So uh, that's what, you know, in this pandemic also I've been doing. And uh, that's what I believed in my life. And I think I'll keep doing that only. Karan, what about you? Um, I think Prasoon kind of made a really good point earlier. I think as just, this is the first time, I think probably since like World War II, where the entire world has gone through a collective experience. And I think it's those kind of moments that really change. Like, you know how they say um, art is a reflection, art is a reflection of reality, right? So I feel like the fact that the entire world has gone through these collective, this collective experience and we're still going through it, I think it's, we're all gonna look 
at the content we're being fed in a very different way, you know, because it's not, it's not business as usual. Everyone's life has changed. So I think I, I'm, I'm oddly optimistic about the situation. I think it's going to um, democratize, you know, film. I think it's going to democratize the music industry if people look at it the right way. Um, personally, for me, I've, I've really liked it. You know, I think we're all, we're all like busy people. And this time has really let us remember, you know, why we do what we do. And I think... In, when you when it's business as usual, you know you're just trying to meet that deadline. You're just trying to hit those numbers. But I think right now, anyone that's been like you know, if you're writing a film, if you're if you're producing a film, if you're looking through scripts, I think we're all looking at it through a different lens right now. And I think that's what's really important. I think you know, being able to introspect and and try and bring something authentic out into into the market post this. I think that's something which we're all trying to do now. And like, like I said, like Russell just really hit the nail on the head with that. I think people are going to expect different content, you know, to cater to this collective experience we've all had. And um, I'm really, I'm really optimistic about about the the fallout from this entire situation on the entertainment industry as a whole. Uh, Nitesh, yeah. Uh, for for me, uh, there are four important things uh, which I have realized. Uh, the first one being that you really don't need a lot in life to be happy. You, know, you, I mean, this is what I have learned over the past months. You know, you are actually happy in bare minimum. So one important lesson for me is that. Uh, second is that uh, optimizing of your time. You know, now I have realized that there is a lot of technology around us which can actually help us optimize our time, we really don't need to waste our time in a lot of unproductive stuff. So that is secondly a uh, thing which is uh, important. Uh, third and most important thing is uh, we should not be putting our health or the health of our loved ones for granted. You know, you need to make a conscious effort to make sure, uh, you know, that we are healthy. Uh, we are prepared for any such situation like that, whether it is boosting your immunity or just staying fit. You know, so you should not be taking health for granted of yourself or your loved ones. And fourth, and another something which is very important is the importance of conversations. Yes. Conversations are the ones which keep us sane. Conversations are the ones which sort out a lot of issues, whether it is within your house or whether it is with your loved ones or friends outside, you know, just pick up a phone and talk. Conversations are the ones which are going to take us really, really very far. So these are the four important takeaways uh, from it. What about you, Siddharth? So, yeah, a couple of things. I think one is that uh, how how adaptable we really are as a species. You know, if someone had told us three or four months ago that this is the situation that we would be living through, I think we would have been completely shocked and appalled at the idea of it and not really knowing whether we would ever be able to come to terms with it. I think... The fact that we've been able to find our own group within it, uh, of course, people are going through issues and we all go through issues that are ups and downs. But I think as a species, we're incredibly like sort of adaptable to changing conditions. And we find ways in which to be able to find our own happiness and our own peace within that. Uh, I, I, I think the second thing is, uh, is, is really like Nitesh said, um, when you strip it down to the bare essentials and you talk about what it is that really matters, uh, you realize that life can be so random. Unexpected events can occur out of the blue completely. Are you focusing your time on things that really matter, the people that really matter to you, uh, things that you enjoy doing? Or are you just on a treadmill, just going on, forgetting really why you started what you started? And I think for me, at least that time to reflect and that time to really you know, analyze that was was important. Now, I don't know whether that's something that once things are back to a more normal situation, you will forget. But I think it's good to at least have gone through the experience, yeah. having been put in that situation, uh, so that you had to reflect on it. Right. That's great. So what about you, uh, Mr. Uh See, I just, uh, we did a song between uh, me and A.R. Rahman, this uh, a song called Hum Haar Nahi Maanenge. We just did a song. Now, while we were working on that and what we were talking about, the way we were working, 
is that you know the music is actually not in the notes music is between the two notes in the silence actually and that's uh, me and rahman were talking he said you know what has happened is with the way we lead a life we live it in a blur so this silence which is there between the two notes is rarely admired so i think the time which we have got to ourselves has uh, given us time to appreciate the nuance whether it's the nuance of life and relationships or musical creations or creations jo hum kehte the na jaldi se moti baat bata tell me what is the moti baat now people are saying tell me the barik baat people have time to nahi nahi just hang on hang on tell me what you exactly trying to say so i think the fabric the thread by thread fabric is getting appreciated for what it is and i think that's in a sense good news for creativity because you know unless we can pause for a while take a deep breath and are ready to appreciate art art doesn't get its due of course there will be art on the go like there will be a a, a take away joint always there we don't have to sit there but the joy of looking out of the you know window and just not doing anything i was asking my dad the other day he's looking out of the window and i saw him sitting there for a couple of hours and i got very restless so i got a ipod and i put it there and and a you know sort of a boss speaker next to him and i putting the music he said why are you putting music so i said you know you looking out of the window you might be getting bored he, he said do i look bored so i said no but what made you think i'm bored so i say what are you doing he said i'm looking out of the window so he can look out of the window for 2 hours and do nothing it's just that we have forgotten the art of not doing anything and looking out of the window i think that probably will come back and that would be the birth rebirth of nuance Okay. Very well said. What about you, Swanit? Yeah, look, I think uh, definitely, uh, you know, everyone's pretty much said uh, pieces of it, but um, I think that one thing that is, uh, you know, I agree with everybody's thoughts. I think one thing that I would just want to highlight is that um, the importance of relationships around you, uh, your support system. uh in these type of uh scenarios you 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 learn to appreciate that a lot more um than you would you know there was a period where i was uh i was a little bit alone uh um you know all by myself so you you learn to actually appreciate the relationships that you're surrounded with or that you would normally take for granted uh so i think you know that is something i want to highlight i'm conscious of time as well okay So I am just going to take one question because you know um, we are over our time, and um, it's a question that's open to all. Oh, sorry, um, it's for Prasunji. Um, how challenging is to balance sensibility and sensitivity? How is the objective of the sensible? See, I think it's all about um, intent. See, uh, sensibility. Of course, I think as I said earlier. when um, any good creative person always um, you know remembers the people he's creating eventually if you are taking your art out in public you know you you, you know them you you respect them you you have a connection with them so uh, i think any artist who to begin will will be will be uh, sensitive towards that and it's very very important but when it comes to sensibility is let me give you an example of women we were very very uh, we talked a lot about in our uh, current cbfc board i think i had some wonderful women there you know uh, who really guided me well and in terms of see simple approach in india we saw that a, a police woman's portrayal a police a woman wearing a uh, you know police dress and a, a camera still is caressing her body as an object and making her gyrate it's not i'm not making a moralistic point here it's 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 a society where which we where, where do we want a society to be we want a cameras to only looking at a police officer um, as an object or we are going to be cognizant of the fact that it's very tough to at least to get out in india for a woman first do education get education and then pass a police exam and be in the police so the cameras intent 
of what the intent is that's where i think our focus has to be if your intent is portrayal <clears throat> i'm with you but if your intent is to exploit i'm not with you that's how you maintain the difference that's where the sensibility and the th- fine line comes in and that comes by talking more and more making each other realize that where which kind of society we do we require where are we taking ourselves you cannot always hide under the garb of big words like self expression freedom of course they are there for everyone but freedom is not a blank check it comes with fair amount of responsibility so i am going to take one more question because it's it's um, to uh, address to all but i would um, request either uh, nitesh ji or uh, siddharth to answer it how can bollywood create a healthy ecosystem for bright minds considering the recent events that have brought to surface discrimination based on wealth and connection is there a hope and scope for um, aspiring people who are you know who can come from small town or you know even want to uproot themselves from united states and come to india to uh, make it in bollywood so nitesh can uh, can i think uh, when you look at the number of people who enter the industry and been able to make a mark completely from the outside i think one should be celebrating their achievements and one should be you know giving them the due credit that they deserve uh, i i do believe that it is an industry that ultimately rewards merit uh, it is an industry that uh, because it's a business Uh, therefore, a lot of leveling happens at that level where if you are commercial, as for regardless of where you come from, the industry is going to give you your work. There's no denying that it's definitely more difficult for someone from outside the industry to break into. Right? I think that's that's a given. But which industry in the world is there where there is some privilege afforded to those who have been born into it or who have the benefit of having been brought up? within a certain business or industry that's true around the world i think it's very important to realize that there are scores of people who come in from outside and who made a mark now of course not everyone who comes in from the outside will be able to make it and that's true for any business around the world what happens with the film industry is that because it's in prominence and because it's under the spotlight these issues get that much more magnified but i definitely think that it's important to celebrate the achievements of those who come in from the outside and accept that there are scores of people who've done that and done it very successfully it is do you want to add anything to it it is it is bang on you know he's captured everything which i would have said great so uh we have just heard from some of the bre- best and the brightest minds in the bollywood 2020 has made us all of us very uncomfortable it has been painful at times it's been scary and in our face asking all of us some very difficult question it has been if as if god has scripted a horror story and has decided to put it live for the world to see and experience for bollywood it may be the right time for introspection as covid-19 has not only brought financial distress to the entertainment industry but brought to light some of the critical issues of mental health that cannot be ignored we just lost a very bright and a talented young actor last week there is no mask for mental health problems change is overdue let's make year 2020 the year of change let's declare the change let's work for the change and let's become the change thank you very much all for joining it was a great pleasure to have all of you thank you for your time and thank you for all the attendees for joining us this has been a great session thank you thank you thank you so thank you so uh, i will just take one photograph of all of us thank you so much Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.